engine is a system, so you can't do anything to one thing without affecting something in some drastic form or fashion. And the cylinder head is certainly no different. Um, so, you know, when we are looking at cylinder heads, we have to consider a lot of guys are buying short blocks or buying long blocks. And they may buy a short block from a customer, or excuse me, from a supplier, and then take their heads to the machine shop. And then when they do that, they take their heads to the machine shop, and they've got, uh, they don't know what the deck height was that the, uh, the person that supplied them the engine or the short block was. They have no clue in knowing what the deck height is. And then they take the other part of this to the machine shop, and then they begin to machine down the top of the cylinder head, right? Or the face of the cylinder head. So now you've kind of got two different dimensions. It would be like uh, somebody doing the concrete work, right? And not really having any of the same, and not sharing the same plans. And think about this in terms of an origin. So you, how everything has to have an origin. If you have an address, I promise you that address that you live at, whatever, it was based off of some origin in your state, your county, your city, whatever. And it's this far from this point, right? Well, our origin on an engine is based off the crankshaft center line. Typically, that is where our zero, zero origin is, right? So, if the deck height is based off from the center line of the crankshaft to the top of the deck, and we go, okay, that's our deck height. Then now, our valve train geometry, so our rocker arm uh, at the top, touches onto the tip of the valve, okay? But the more that we machine the surface here down, the closer everything moves if this was the crankshaft here everything starts moving that direction now because this is now no longer thick the problem is is it's not just one thing that changed now what's happened is is that this valve as it lay and we may need to turn that around so the camera can see it so as the valve now is moving also down closer to the piston just as you said your valve recessions which we'll say over here if we continue to whack this off but we don't affect anything with Cutting the valve seat, we know that our valve recession is actually uh, going to become shallower and shallower. Okay. Well, some folks go, okay, well that's fine. We'll just cut this dimension. Okay. And this is really where it starts to get screwed up. You go, okay, well you cut that dimension, fine. Okay. But when you cut this side here for your valve seat, right? Our valve seat's now cut, so that our valve goes and it goes down. When it moves down, here's what happens. Now that the valve is moving this direction, it's coming out this direction further. Okay, well that's a problem because that tip has to touch onto that, that touches onto this, that pushes on the lifter, it goes to the camshaft. Woo! But all we did was change one dimension. Right. And we just now we've just changed four or five different things. So now we go, okay, well we need to change uh, and do something about cutting the valve stem down, right? So now we have just the valve stem. Well, there's one other thing. Now your spring tension has changed as well because your springs are locked on to a groove right here. Now what we've done is we've moved this up, but this spring has remained in its same position because it's based off of a non-machine surface here. So as we move this spring and we maintain its position and we move the valve up, what's going to happen to my tension on my spring? Well, it's going to now become looser and looser, right? So it's not going to have the same seat pressure. Okay, well now that's a problem. So now if that's going to be fixed, we have to do something about either shimming the spring or changing uh, the retainer to adjust that or even the valve that would accommodate for that. So the importance of valve train geometry is extremely critical. That's the reason why we always encourage guys to buy long blocks. Because I'm setting this engine up on the short block method, okay, I get it, I understand where everything's at. Now there's another thing too. We just did this. If we don't adjust this and we shorten the deck and we shorten the cylinder head and now the valve rod is actually pushing through this hole further and the rocker arm is touching and pushing down here. It pushes on the rod that pushes on the lifter. Now we have too much preload and we cause lifter failure because we're bottoming out. So those are all things to take into consideration. Now, how do you combat that? Well, knowing what you changed and then doing something about it. Um, you have to alter each value. So, it's a domino effect. Those are one uh, one of the main things, and that's, that's like I said, that's one of the reasons why I really, really prefer uh, to be able to sell like a long block because I can set my, my whole valve train system up. 